Hey everyone, it's Harms from Harms Storybooks and I'm here today to share with you a slightly different video. This is a video that's been requested and it was how on earth I found the book titles that I'm reading for my 20th Century Queer project. My 20th Century Queer project is a project where I'm reading 100 plus books by queer and trans authors published in the 20th century, one for each year. I'll link a playlist down below with all the videos I've done for the project so far if you're interested. My 1940s selection is coming slowly, but it is coming. So first things first, if you are interested in doing something like this yourself, which I'm sure no one is, start with the LGBT novels by a decade, which I found on Wikipedia at the tail end of my search by going down a very long rabbit hole. And I remember finding it super late at night and being so annoyed that I only found it as I had already discovered a vast majority of the titles on the list, but yeah, it's fine. So this category has a bunch of articles listed under each decade, so you can click on a decade and find a Wikipedia page for that novel. This is only for fiction, I believe, so keep that in mind. I myself started on the Wikipedia page of gay literature and I scrolled all the way down till I found the 20th century section. From there I added The Immoralist by André Gide, Death in Venice by Thomas Mann, Morris by E. M. Forster, and a ton of others. This was actually where I first heard about Blair Niles' Stranger Brother, a book set in the Harlem Renaissance that has a very misleading cover. This is written by a white woman under a pseudonym about a platonic relationship between two white people, one woman and one gay man. I thought it featured a black protagonist or a biracial gay protagonist, but it is a white book, so yeah. However, this article does mention Richard Bruce. Nugent's Smoke, Lilies, and Jade, which was the first queer black short story to discuss queerness and interracial desire in 1926. This is where I found a lot of the books of the 1940s, Carson McCullough's Reflection of a Golden Eye, The City in the Pillar by Gore Vidal, Jean Genet's work, Yukio Mishima's Confessions of a Mask, and Truman Capote's Other Voices and Other Rooms, which I've read and loved. Michael Bronsky is in this article, which makes me laugh because I've read a book of his and hated it, and I will be reviewing it soon. Get out of here, Bronsky. This page is how I learned about Ellen Drury, who wrote a book called Advise and Consent. That's a beast. It's like 600 pages, and the audiobook is like 80 hours long, uh, and he's written quite a few other books in the same series. Then, of course, we have James Baldwin. He's in the list a lot for the 50s and 60s. Then we have City of Night by John Recchi, or Recchi, which is a queer hustling novel. Christopher Isherwood's A Single Man, and Thomas Pynchon's Gravity's Rainbow, which I am still reading. Then finally, there's The Joy of Gay Sex, which I read and took issues with, and A Boy's Own Story. So from there, I scrolled down to the speculative fiction section that allowed me to add a few more titles, A Female Man by Joanna Russ and a couple of others, then I looked through the LGBT comics section, and I didn't find too many titles, but I did remember Alison Bechdel, who I added to the list. The part of this article that I really liked is right down the bottom where it says, Queer theorists have noticed that LGBT characters in mainstream comics are shown as assimilated into heterosexual society, whereas in alternative comics, the queerness and uniqueness of LGBT culture is emphasized. Then I looked through the children's fiction section, and I got some titles, but I don't know if I'll be able to source them, so there's that. And then from there, I clicked on the lesbian literature page that gave me a ton of examples too. God, look at this beautiful photo of Sappho. What a queen. So I scrolled past the photo of Anne Lister and references to Camilla by Joseph Sheridan Le Fanu and to the 20th century. We have The Well of Loneliness, which I already had because I'd read it. And I added Juna Barnes, a ton of her books, not just Nightwood, Gertrude Stein, and Virginia Woolf, along with Vida Sackville West, who apparently inspired Orlando. There's lots of poetry and also some manga by Nobuko Yoshia, who was a pioneer for girl love and lesbian manga stories. Then we have Two Serious Ladies, which I have out from the library right now. I just have to read it. Then we get into Pulp Fiction. Pulp can be really hard to find as it was cheaply made and so a lot of the pulp that is available, like the Price of Souls or Bebo Brinka series, are reissued. Then there's Desert of the Heart and Maureen Duffy. Then we get into second wave feminism and the womanist movement. 
Jill Johnston, Rita Mae Brown, Joanna Russ, and Audrey Lord, Jewel Gomez, and Paula Gunn Allen. Then in 1988, the Lambda Literary Awards were a thing, so that gave audiences who wanted queer books the ability to actually find them. Then there's Alison Bechdel, Christina Perry Rossi, Kui Mao Jin, and Quicksand by Junichiro Tanisaki, that is a 1926 classic that explores queer love in Japan. There's Jeanette Winterson and a ton of other authors. Super interesting that so many of these books were fictionalized accounts of the author's lives that sometimes had the actual autobiography published many years later. Then there's a whole section on young adult literature, most of which I added but I won't go into because young adult's not my favorite genre. Then publishers, notable works, and authors. Then after that adventure, I went down other links in a Google search and I found this article by The Guardian, this article by Advocate, and this one by BuzzFeed. This one by BuzzFeed was not very helpful at all. I will say that a lot of the themed lists did have the same 10 titles over and over, which is where my search felt really frustrating, but every once in a while I'd happen upon a gem. I'll try and find a listicle from Oprah Magazine that was really helpful in locating a lot of queer black classics. That helped me discover Essex Hemphill and Marlon James's favorite pulpy queer book, Children of the Sun by Kyle Onstott. Just the other day, I discovered an LGBT African books list that was on a blog and was great and had a couple of titles that I added to the list. Overall, I think listicles like this are really valuable because they tend to challenge the dominant narrative about queerness in Africa. There's so much more to queer culture in Africa than danger and strife. There's so much history there, so much conversation to be had about liberation from colonization. So I'll be keeping an eye out for those books. The other thing I do to add more titles is to not only see who wrote the book and if they wrote more than one book, but to see who wrote the preface or the introduction for a book. Usually authors who were inspired by the work or were around at the same time as the author or a historian sometimes writes the preface. In the case of Audre Lorde, Sherlock Clark, another black feminist, wrote the preface to her work. The other thing I'll do is read the backs of the work and see who wrote a review or who enjoyed it. Sounds weird, but a lot of the time for classic queer books, endorsing it could have been risky, and so it follows that a lot of the people who endorsed those books would have been queer, like-minded authors. I will also generally look up the author to get more context for their work, but also to see if they were part of a writing collective or if they mentored any other authors or were mentored by anyone. It feels a lot more underground than sourcing other titles of books, but it also feels very queer, so I'm okay with that. Another strategy I used to try and locate these titles before the pandemic was to ask booksellers and librarians, especially secondhand booksellers. I'd go in and ask about 20th century queer literature and get a variety of responses and book suggestions that were always really interesting. While looking for titles, I found that this is a kind of project that you really need to do with people. With a human touch, it really makes all the difference. I also have a couple of friends who are interested in the same topic that I am. They love queer history or friends who are big bibliophiles who will suggest me plenty of titles. It really is a collective effort and it takes a lot of time. I think I'm finally at a stage now where I'm comfortable with the amount of titles and the selection that I have. I don't actually know how many titles I have because it changes so often, but I do know that I have about 10 pages of book suggestions if that helps you picture the options. My only issue now is finding all these rare books, which is another hurdle altogether. My research style is super messy and haphazard, but a lot of these titles are quite unknown or like Claude McKay's Romance in Marseille, unpublished until recently. I'm now at a point where I'm trying really hard to include translated books, books by black authors, Asian authors, lesbian authors, and trans authors. I'm also trying to include a few more formats of books, such as picture books, manga, and zine collections. It's an ever-evolving, kind of weird passion project, but I love it all the same. I do hope this video wasn't super boring. I feel like looking at lists of books and Wikipedia articles someone googled could be pretty boring, but hopefully it was interesting. I'll leave a copy of the list down below and the 20th Century playlist as well if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching. Bye everyone!